Hello and welcome to this week's ITPM Flash. My name is Ed Check. It's Sunday the 16th of Feb and the gold is in the data. Now, before I outline my buy idea, I just wanted to start talking about the broad thematics that I still see running in the tech space. So, of course, we'll start with hardware and the data center hardware thematic is still very much in play with increasing capex outlined by the hyperscalers set to grow in 2025 by another 25 to 30 percent. And the deep seek event has flown through the sector and the hardware leaders have consolidated and are now trading solidly if unspectacularly. But the hardware story is still intact for now. Software is entering a sweet spot. And as previously discussed, the AI revolution is finally moving into the broadware software space now as use cases explode and enterprise consumption phase really widens out. And the mass adoption of generative AI is right in front of us in plain sight. And the one thing that we have learned from DeepSeek is that the cost of inference AI is going to fall fast and continue to fall fast. And the commoditization of AI inference will be startlingly fast, in my opinion, for most end use cases. And this, of course, brings forward software adoption. And this is, of course, Je Jevons' paradox. So when we put it all together, we're in a sweet spot for the tech market as hardware and software are still strong and underpinned and rallying together. But in my opinion, the software sector is in the early stages of ultimately taking over the leadership of the market. And even the IT consulting firms will be busy as the C-suite have to get a wriggle on and make sure that they're going to adopt and integrate pretty quickly or face uh, losing some competitive advantage. So the first chart we'll have a look at today is one you should recognize. This is my little uh uh my little indexes and looking at the hyperscalers the hardware software and then the mid cap tech we observe a couple of points obviously the smaller mid cap tech is still underperforming size still does matter and obviously from a software perspective the app lovings the palantirs the uh, sales forces the service nows they have got a lead and they've got size and scale and they're starting and continuing to drive some operational leverage in their businesses. But when we look at the red circle, the more recent time period, following deep seek, you will see the rates of change of the green chart being the greatest. And that, of course, is software. And we're always interested in rates of change rather than absolutes. So coming back to the gold is in the data. Simplistically, to use AI optimally, you need to have your data in a clean and structured format, hence my focus on the data stocks. It's always been turning raw data into actionable intelligence, and raw data, of course, is essential for good outcomes. You're really only as good as the data. And if your data is stored across multiple formats, unstructured like email, PDFs, and images, then a lot of pre -pope pre-processing is required to be AI ready. A company simply has to have its data in a clean, structured and real-time format. So the sort of basket of stocks I've been looking at, companies like Hub, Snowflake, MongoDB, Palantir, and of course, Confluent. And this is my long Confluent. So this is an $11.5 billion software company, basically just data streaming platform that helps its clients and it's got 5,000 of them to harness the power of real-time data. It's really data transformation and processing. It has three core offerings, Confluent Cloud, Confluent Platform, and Apache Kafka. And simply, it's simplistically, it's just about connecting and integrating data from multiple sources and systems in real time, allowing for AI and integration, real data formation, and data streaming for AI apps. 
Its client base ranged across financial services, retail, manufacturing, tech, and healthcare. So it's got a big addressable market. So we understand the why now. We're just moving out through the AI value chain. Let's have a look at their Q4 report. They had a nice double beat and raise. We have a look at the quants looking forward for 25, 6, and 7. We've got good revenue growth in 20, growing to 22%. There's good operational leverage coming through. We like to see the earnings growth greater than the revenue growth, and it's forecasted for 22%, 39%, and 45% over the last three years. It is still loss-making from a gap perspective, and then being a mid-cap, there's all the issues of uh, stock grants and dilution. It's trading on about nine times forward sales. And as we know, in these scalable tech companies with growing addressable markets and operational leverage, valuations can get extraordinarily high. So following their earnings recently, the stock rallied about 28%. They had a nice double beat, as I said, and they've outlined 22% subscription revenue growth forward one year. But the reason why it's a buy now for me, it was the major expansion of their deal with Databricks, one of the best data, data companies around private. And this is going to combine Confluence data streaming together with Databricks data intelligence platform. And this is really what might drive the already impressive numbers better. Remember, stocks move when they do better or worse than expected. Looking at the absolute static quants is never a, a particularly good indicator of whether stocks are going to re-rate or not. So obviously on the day of earnings, the stock was up 28, 30%. You're never going to buy those on day one as an options trader, hoping for a pullback. It's calm, vols calmed down a little bit. The stock's trading around 34 and it's a go for me. Now, earnings are coming out on May the 6th. I'm looking at an aggressive out of the money option. If you were going to do the vertical today, the May 40s versus 46 for the 16th of May will allow you to buy 40 spreads and you'll be in for about $1.25. The most they can make is $6 if the stock's above 46 or at 46 on May the 16th and you'll get just under a four for one. So a nice big out of the money vertical call spread. Not splashing around in the shallow end. If you want to do a running bomb off the top board, just buy the May 40s. And when the stock rallies, and rallies hard into earnings or any upgrades between now and earnings, you'll be able to sell the short leg much nearer earnings. You'll get a much bigger risk-adjusted return, and your at-risk will go down materially just before the earnings print. So that's a nice, simple idea. I want to be in data. I want to find a mid-cap that's growing fast. And this deal, this increased collaboration with uh, Databricks, I think could be the next really meaningful catalyst. Now, over the last few months, we've had a lot of excitement with the Trump victory and trade wars and Department of Government, efficiency, and deep seek, and de-escalation. And in the background, we're just told all the time that the economy is strong, retail spending's good, jobs is good, we're not really worried about bond yields, all is well. And I remind myself that AI is all about corporate profitability going up through company efficiency, ultimately at the expense of human labour. So I'm keeping a very close eye and reminding myself that 70% of the US economy continues to be retail spending. And whilst it's too early to start banding around phrases like the AI jobs massacre, make no mistake, if we start to see retail sales falling or unemployment 
seemingly surprisingly increase rapidly, then it's a big red warning sign. Okay. Now, I know when we get lower retail sales, bond yields fall and the market in the Pavlovian response always thinks, well, that's good, that's good for everything, everybody. And we've seen inflation sort of continue to track the wrong way, but we're sure it's going to fall. And we think growth is okay and we're not expecting layoffs and we're expecting retail spending to be robust. Now, some industries are going to take a lot more time to integrate and some aren't. And if you look at tech, for example, they understand AI better, they built it, they've integrated it, and they're just starting to fire people already. And when we look at the jobs data, we never really get a handle on are they lower income jobs going or higher income jobs going. But if we start to see stagflation, uh, sorry, inflation steady above where the Fed wants. And if we start to see unemployment creep up and retail spending fall, then these are a red flag to me. And whether you're going to be buying out of the money Russell puts to hedge, make no mistake, when we start to get a higher unemployment, this market could change very rapidly. So it's all fine for now. I've just identified the macro uh, data sets that will flag red for me. And then, of course, we will manage the portfolio accordingly. But for now, the gold is in the data, confluent, buy an aggressive out of the money call, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.